Ladies and gentlemen, AMD is about to have a zen moment for graphics if leaks regarding RDNA 5 are to be believed. These rumors point to RDNA 5 sporting an entirely new ground-up architecture, very large performance improvements, and a whole host of new goodies. Before we get to that though, let's go through some claims systematically that a user on chip hell, WJM4796, I'm going to refer to them as just WJ for the rest of this video for everyone's sanity, has actually been making regarding the performance of RDNA3. Basically, these claims assert that RDNA3 did miss internal projections that AMD had, particularly regarding efficiency. Now, personally, I do believe that these claims are true. I'm about 95% actually that they're true. I've had multiple very good sources tell me this. And in fact, you may recall that over a year ago, there were some slides actually that popped up from AMD, which literally state the GPU is capable of hitting over three gigahertz. There were also a lot of rumors from myself, Skyjuice, and some others that the architecture N31 was capable of supporting up to 192 megabytes of infinity cache. This is utilizing uh, basically the TSVs on the um, GPU, which were never used. Uh, this would mean 192 megabytes of infinity cache, but of course, the SM2900 XTX, for example, was only available in 96 megabyte variants. So WJ is also confirming this, again, via the post on Chip Hell. So what does all of this mean? Well, RDNA 4 and RDNA 5 are going to improve on RDNA 3 quite a bit. There's been a lot of discussion already regarding RDNA 4, so I'm not going to regurgitate that too much in this video. But basically, the same leaker is asserting that ray tracing and efficiency are significant better than previous generations. We've seen Kepler L2 state this and of course there's been quite a lot of PS5 Pro rumors concerning the ray tracing performance of Sony's upgraded hardware. You may recall it's around two to four times faster than the base model. However, that is with a couple of caveats. One, we don't know what other tweaks and changes that Sony have incorporated in the machine that haven't been documented and also we don't know how that is uh, any different from RDNA 4. And the other thing, of course, is that the actual chip itself contains a lot more workgroup processors and other bits and bobs, which obviously will improve performance significantly anyway. But I'm sure you'll agree that it does sound pretty interesting. I think RDNA 4, obviously it's not going to outperform the current RDNA 3 GPUs uh, in terms of like traditional raster performance and so on but basically speaking i think that these are going to be very decent gpus for those of us who are on a budget and let's face it if it can you know run games at 1440p with all the bells and whistles or i mean even with fsr uh, certainly 4k is going to be more than possible but let's move on to RDNA 5, because this apparently is going to be a new ground-up design. Now, I've mentioned on the channel that I've heard that this is true as well, but yeah, WJ is asserting that really this is going to take things to a whole new level, and they are saying that this is going to be AMD's Zen moment. So obviously, technically speaking, if you look at, let's say, N31, is chiplet. However, there is only a single compute die, but now... For RDNA 5, this is going to be different, and there's going to be multiple compute dies on the GPU. I'm going to dig into this a lot deeper because I'm getting a little bit of conflicting information regarding some of the specs. But what I'll tell you guys is that all the watts uh, tweeted actually that we're looking at over 144 work group processors for N50. Now, basically, that figure is the same one that was touted for N40, but obviously AMD have canned this, so. N50 allegedly has more work group processors. I've been told a figure of over 300 CU, but honestly, I've been given quite a lot of ranges, so I don't know which one's true. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep things a little quiet, but again, I have heard comfortably over 300 compute units for this thing, but given there are quite a lot of architectural changes over RDNA 3 as well as RDNA 4, you can't obviously directly compare one to the other, because even you know, ignoring things like improvements in ray tracing and cache design. Also, you start having higher clock frequencies and all this other stuff. So it becomes very difficult to compare an orange to an orange in this particular case. 
Moving on to the bus, all the watts is stating it's over 384. I personally have heard 384 was for the highest end figure, but it's very possible that my information is an older number or the figure was actually from a cut down skew. So I don't know which is true, so I'm just going to say all the watts figure as well. Either way, I think this is going to be a very interesting GPU. It's going to be absolutely fascinating to see how NVIDIA responds to this. Now, there have been some reports, actually, that uh, NVIDIA are testing RTX 50 coolers and boards, basically, up to 600 watts. Now, I'm going to just mention this really quickly in this video because, quite frankly, I think this is an absolute nothing burger, guys. Uh, if you recall, back in the RTX 4090 leaks, I believe there were test boards. This may be incorrect, so someone do correct me in the comments if I'm wrong here. But I think there was like boards that were 600 watts, and I think it was like eight or 900 watts or something like that, where there were leaks with test boards. It just doesn't mean anything. Um, at the end of the day, these figures can go up and down, and with internal testing, like, yeah, okay, it's you know, it's something to be aware of, but if anything, the fact that this is a 600 watt versus 900 watt, it may be an improvement. We don't really know too much yet about how the energy efficiency of Blackwell is going to shape up. I'm not particularly concerned. I have heard a figure of the 5090 being over 500 watts, like around 500 watts. I think it was 520. That's from memory, so it could have been 530, but let's just say 520. But honestly, it doesn't really matter because NVIDIA with like the 4090 design, for example, they were bringing that thing up and down, up and down, up and down. And, you know, the specs literally changed multiple times up until launch. So I don't think the cooler design particularly means anything, especially when you take into consideration that uh, these things are typically a little bit over-engineered, people want to overclock and so on. Basically, they're just testing limits, what the silicon is capable of, and so on and so on. So I don't think uh, 600 watts is anything to be particularly concerned over. It doesn't mean that uh, the GPU is going to be over that. And also, uh, some of the coolers were like, well, under that, I think it was something along 200, uh, sorry, yeah, 250 watts. This is for the total graphics power as well. So I think that is pretty interesting. It's going to be very cool to actually see what these next generation GPUs are going to be ending up like. I will also be very curious to see, um, because allegedly... Um, RDNA 5 is going to launch end of 2025 or early 2026. So at that point, of course, Blackwell would have been on store shelves for some time. So the question is, one, will we see some type of refresh from Blackwell or of Blackwell, should I say, or what will NVIDIA do? It's going to be very interesting because theoretically RDNA 5 should be designed to outcompete Blackwell, right? I mean, if they've got that much of a head start, you would assume so. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all this stuff really shapes up. I will also be very curious to see how the next generation of GPUs bring in technology as well. Yeah, of course, we've got upsampling tech, but I truly believe that, you know, it's a couple of years. Uh, path tracing and so on is going to be synonymous with PC gaming because I think we're going to have so much performance, so much hardware grunt that it's not going to be too difficult. With that said, guys, I think that's just about it for this particular video. It was a bit of a quick one. I know I apologize for that, but uh, normal service shall resume over the next couple of days. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.